Jai Hind and welcome to Dev Talks. This is Adi Achin. As you all can see, I have with me Lieutenant General Ravi Shankar, who's going to take us through the story of Sri Lanka. A very prominent nation, if I may say so, has been at turmoil for most of its history in the modern times, in the past about 100 years. Having said that, in the past about 4-5 years, they had come out to be one of the biggest players as far as tourism was concerned. It was actually beating India or the southern Indian destinations to a large extent, making a lot of money. But suddenly we realize that the Sri Lankan economy is gone to the tumble and they are in die-hard condition. Chinese have a huge role to play. We all know the story of Amman Dota port and everything of that sort. So there's been a tug of war between India and China with Sri Lanka right in the middle. As in many countries, as me and General Shankar have discussed, in the neighborhood watch as well. The Sri Lankan foreign minister was here recently and he said something very, very interesting. He said that all other relations aside, the relation between India and Sri Lanka are is the most critical for the Sri Lankan nation, its people and its system. That was a very, very big underline for, uh, you know, for India, as a matter of fact, to understand, interpret and actually take action. So, you know, the it's an interesting paradigm of situations which is, you know, happening between India and Sri Lanka today. And we see Sri Lanka kind of making a complete about face. So before we begin with the question, sir, how about, you know, giving us a opening thought? Uh, it's a, the current phase uh, is a welcome one. But of course, my heart goes out to people of Sri Lanka who are suffering. Because there, the economy has collapsed. The daily life has uh, become very costly. Inflation is rampant. Foodstuffs are not available. Their agriculture is gone. Uh, and it will take a long time for them to recover out of this. Uh, and what has come out of this entire thing is that China is a fair weather friend. And I hope India is able to uh, you know, sort this out or drive it home to Sri Lanka and Sri Lankans. And the fact that India is their all-weather friend has actually come out. Right? And, and this is a turn of events which we should capitalize on. And that's some one of the things we can discuss as to how to do it. Absolutely, sir. Uh, before we get on to that, sir, you know, the foreign minister's visit actually just showcases in a time when Sri Lanka is in deep trouble. Wongi went to Sri Lanka and all that stuff happened. After that, we see that the foreign minister comes to India. Um, there's some deal signed, all that stuff has happened. But what he said was very, very interesting. How do you see his portrayal of the relationship between the two countries being brought about today? See, uh, first and foremost, this entire portrayal is because it is only India which has given them a lifeline. There's a credit line given. They, we are giving them capability to sustain themselves with the oil. And then you're building that port terminal. You're giving them all kinds of help. Right? And you told them, look, and you also give them some food and all that. Right? Uh, till now, they were not in need of all that because their economy was going good. When their economy collapsed because of lack of tourism, COVID, and then that internal policy of using, uh, you know, organic pesticides and, you know, manure, that collapsed. And then their agriculture collapsed. Tea, which is their main export, also collapsed. So they're facing an all-round collapse, right? So that naturally, when India goes out to help them, they will feel indebted. On the other hand, the Chinese initially screwed them because they gave them some... I think uh, a ship full of so-called organic uh, mm -hmm. fertilizer, which was actually not gold, and there was a fracas about that. So because of that, two things have been set off one against each other, and uh, they have to change tune. They can't be they can't remain antagonistic with India and continue to you know. Uh, expect India to help. So that change had to happen. And it was only this thing that, you know, the foreign minister came and he spoke. He had a very conciliatory tone. And then he invoked all the 
deep relationship and cultural links and all that that was uh, expected that's uh, you know it's a it's a steep turn in events especially the rajapaksha's yeah. after the, when they came into power the, the rhetoric wasn't this this way see they might have realized that uh, they have no other choice but india dur daras tak the only indian mainland hmm. yeah, china is far away pakistan see you have to understand they had very good equations with pakistan pakistan yes sir a very good equations with pakistan especially when they had to take out the ltt completely they took a lot of military help from pakistan but pakistan themselves are in a bad shape okay they are trying to develop good equations with bangladesh but there is limitations to that because bangladesh might be doing well but it is not a international aid society as it right so there are limits so only country which actually can help them is india india so but you know one of the questions that was posed to the sri lankan uh, foreign minister was the fact that the balancing act that they'll have to play between india and china china owns a lot of stake in sri lanka in terms of debt in terms of uh, real estate in terms of ports and god alone knows what else uh, how do you think that sri lankans are going to play this game of balancing both the powers although words were spoken that it's it's one relationship is not against the other but how do you think in practicality this will happen sir well they have no choice uh for it's possible that some of the politicians are still with china mm. uh that's there and the debt to china is quite high after all they still own humbon tota they've been given one port terminal uh, uh sri lanka cannot repay the debt back i don't know whether they'll be allowed the debt restructuring also so there are the things that sri lanka will will have to uh, go along with china play along with china but now with this event happening there is no way they can do anything antagonistic to india right and that message would have gone to china also now it has its own uh, deterrent value china knows that if they put across a request which will you know which uh, will be turned down it will be bad face for them so they'll not put it that's part of the deal right and in, in any case even if china does put across something uh, sri lanka will think twice before they might consult they might seek a way out from india i mean there are many ways of doing all this right but to that extent i am sure that you know the that humban tota becoming a naval base has gone back in time right uh, but then these are all mercurial things and something will happen tomorrow and can things can change so we have to be careful also uh, geopolitics is an ever moving affair sir yeah it it's always uh, on the move yeah is a matter of fact you mentioned that the sri lankans had asked them for a restructuring of the debt during wongi's visit and there was kind of no response that was given yeah it was a very cold shoulder yes sir but one another interesting thing that wongi did during his visit into sri lanka was actually just you know finger into the tamil issue the you know which is a very precarious issue in sri lanka uh, we also saw the members of parliament from the tamil community writing to prime minister modi directly about the 13th amendment uh, what do you think the chinese were trying to do there uh, by you know playing both the sides of the game see yeah it was very mo- first thing he went bare chested into the temple and you know prayed to tamil you know which like can any south indian temple yeah. you know where you go some not all some some yeah so he has been taken there and given and he's done all this symbolic with soft power right uh, and he's reaching out to tamils so it has a hidden message to sri lanka if you try anything we'll think you through tamils they know the everyone knows the past fault line yes right fault line so he is playing both sides of the fault lines right and everyone knows that uh, the 13th amendment and the devolution of power to tamils has not happened and sri lanka has been dragging its feet on it hmm. right and it's india's constant endeavor to ensure the uh, devolution of powers to sri lanka uh, tamils sri lankan tamils happens it's not happened 
So this is quite dicey. Plus the fact that tomorrow he might seek some concessions in areas which are closer to India. Amantota is at least on the other side of Sri Lanka. He might come clearer to Anuradhapura or you know, all these places. Just off the Rameshwaram course and say, let me have something here. Uh, if he gets the Tamils on his side. It's also possible that he might have asked Sri Lanka for something. Sri Lankans would have said, the, the Sinhalas would have said, look, unless the Tamils are on board, we can not help you. So that also might have taken place. So he's gone and placated the Tamils. He'll give them something and, you know, get some, right? Jaffna, Andhradapura, that northern area, they might get, which will be closer to India. And you're within the missile range to India. So if they get something there and, you know, so it's dicey, actually. We, that fellow, he's reached here is a dicey proposition. And we need to be alive to that. Bengal uh, fire. So we can all, we, we also have our own game to play. Uh, we must not forget that at a point of time, the Tamil Nadu government, then Tamil Nadu government was supporting LTT, LTT against Indian troops. <laughs> That's a fact. Okay. All right. So, uh, we should ensure and tell Sri Lanka, look, take care. You're playing with fire. Something like that starts off again and, you know, you don't devolve powers. You do this thing. It, things could go bad. Uh, it's, a, it's a very sensitive issue, you know. Uh, to, and this is also the time when Sri Lanka will be amenable to devolving powers too. The Tamils. See, uh, devolving powers to the Tamils has got a lot of value because it's got a blowback effect on Tamil Nadu, which is one of your most progressive states. You can't divorce the ethnic connection, right? So, uh, it's got a lot of... Uh, that's why they also know it. Chinese also know it. That's why he's gone there. It's interesting when the Chinese try and play on this fault line. So one of the things that I would like to ask you, if this fault line actually erupts, it, it, it brings Sri Lanka back to a situation of the LTT days, which creates further dis, uh, you know, instability. Ah, that, like that's going to, in, in, in no, that's going to take time. See, that's going to take a long, long, long time if it has to go to that level. right? Because uh, the Sri Lankan Tamils... Uh, their entire system has been, you know, uh, decimated, yes. decimated, right? And uh, they themselves went through a lot of problems uh, at that time. So I don't think they also want to go back. So to that extent, it's going to take a long time. But then these things you never know, you know, how, when how things can go back. So it's not in our interest also for this the, the situation to develop. Because it will destabilize Tamil Nadu once again. There's no doubt about it. Yeah. So we are also not interested in that. If we need to ha go, yeah, go the democratic way and make things happen democratically, even if it takes a little longer. If nothing else, there'll be protests and roadblocks. And yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, I remember it was quite bad here. Right? So, so that is it. Yeah. So coming to the big one, I think that this is something uh, which I'd like to keep at the end, but the featured part of the conversation is the fact that what, you know, India has given $1.5 billion in line of credit, some food, some oil, some this, some that. Medicines have been going across, over vaccination has been going across. Uh, although Indian, there's this one line that comes out from the Ministry of Foreign Affairs, but it has been actually celebrated in Sri Lanka and that's something that we know with their press and, uh, you know, statements that are coming out. What more should India do? Because one of the biggest things that is criticized about India's role in its neighborhood is not taking complete responsibility of what needs to be done. And this is something that we've again discussed in the neighborhood watch as well. I think this is a time when India can really take a lot of initiatives. So, really a lot. This is an opportunity which we should not lose. Uh, fundamental uh, action which we should take, vaccination, COVID help, health. Uh, we should do a massive outreach to them. Give them all the experience which we have to enable them to come out of their situation. 
right? And uh, that's the first thing. The second thing, which is, I think, very important and which we should do in a big way, is Buddhism. See, the fount of Buddhism is in India. After all, Buddhism was here. Whether you talk of Sanchi, you, just, uh, you talk of, uh, you know, Sarnath, or you talk of Gaya, or you talk of Nalanda, all these places of uh, Buddhist uh, thing, we should open up to Sri Lanka. I have been to Gaya, I've seen so many Sri Lankans come there. Yeah. And you know, sit under that uh, Bodh Gaya tree. There's a tree there. I don't know whether it's the tree of Buddha from then or not, but that's where people uh, sit and pray in droves. So that's something which we need to improve, that circuit completely. Right? And open it up and use this Buddhist uh, card to get things ahead. In fact, that Buddhist card will not get things ahead only with uh, Sri Lanka, it's got scope with Tibet also. Buddhism. It's got scope with China also. With Myanmar. With Myanmar also. So, there are so many things which you can do. We are not doing enough with Buddhism. I mean, if you go to Gaya and you see that place, you say, yeah, what are you doing? It's a, it's a horror show. Hmm. Okay, we have hell of a lot that we can do. Okay, the conditions in Nalanda and all these places are prehistoric compared to the, the kind of culture which is evident in front of you and the kind of depth of that religion which is evident in front of you, whether you go to even Sarnath or Sanchi, all these places. So, that is one thing which I think we need to use. That's part of our cultural heritage, civilizational heritage. And that civilizational heritage is something which we should use, which we are not using enough. That one. The second thing which uh, we are not using enough is our military. I once spoke to a, a Sri Lankan youngster, you know, when I was a DGRT. So we were in School of Artillery and we were having a discussion. I said, good, I'm glad to see you from Sri Lanka and hear all that. In fact, someone had done LGSC with me long back and a few Sri Lankans had done uh, the NDC with me. I was asking about them. Then we were having a discussion. He said, look, sir, I think uh, we look forward to India for everything. I think, you know, our complete army should be equipped with Indian equipment. <laughs> I said, why? He says, sir, during the time when, you know, India was not giving us any assistance, we had to go to Pakistan, we had to go to China and we got equipment from there. And that equipment we can't maintain. And the, the cost of maintenance is too high. Today we are not able to listen, but we need all that. And uh, if India steps in, uh, you know, we'll be uh, very happy. In any case, you, I mean, look, look at it. Even this chap, uh, the Rajpaksha, Gurdbaya Rajpaksha was the president, was, was a staff college graduate. Yes, sir. In staff college. So, there's a lot of connect. There's a lot that can be achieved. And also, on, we have need to understand that the Sri Lankan military has a bigger role in Sri Lanka than Indian military has in India. So, to that extent, educating their, their military in India, training them, and deepening the military to military contact is very important. And that military to military contact has to extend to Tamils also. Right? And we should, whatever equipment Sri Lanka wants militarily, we should be able to give them basic equipment, what will they want. They don't want, they definitely don't want Brahmos missile systems, right? All that. Plus, we could have a military pact with them. You know, that you have a military pact with them. And ensure that you know China is kept out. That you then we need to help them diplomatically. We need to have an understanding where we can help them in international forums diplomatically. Uh, and again, you go back to the time when uh, in their war against LTT, India was not with them diplomatically, and you know that's part of the bad feeling which is there left. So, if 
India, uh, you know, reaches out to them diplomatically, a lot of good things will happen. And of course, tourism. It might be very small, but tourism will make a play, right? And uh, if look, it's a nearby destination. If you can promote tourism to Sri Lanka, you'll revive that economy also, right? And you could have a bubble, a, a tourist bubble created, so that you know tourism gets revived. And that will also give you our people who want instead of going all around, you can go to Sri Lanka. Sri Lanka is a nice place to go to. I've not been there. That's what I've heard. So there is a lot we can do. Uh, India can do a lot. You know, it might not be. You know, don't treat it like our state. And don't treat. I mean, after Sri Lanka is like. Any one small state, any southern state like of us, like much only population, everything. We might not like to treat it like a state, but let's say give it all the assistance which you can give, which you can, give, which normally you give to a state. Link their thing with our economy. Link economy. So a lot we can do. Revive their industry. They had a lot of exports of garment, shea wool. Like, see, how can you do that? And it makes good sense. Because if you can do that with Bangladesh and Sri Lanka and slowly get on to Myanmar, your neighborhood first is important. You act east. What happened to that? Right? So if neighborhood is first and which is first, so do something. Get into a... So there's so many things which you can do. I mean, if you think, you'll also get some ideas. In fact, I'll over and above what I've said. What do you think you can do? After all, you're in the hospitality industry yourself. One of the biggest things is tourism. Sir. I mean, they've got some fantastic destinations. Uh, Jaffna, you've got uh, you know southern those the entire coast in the south is beautiful. There are some beautiful resorts. Fantastic hospitality and India was, southern part of the country was promoting a lot of tourism into Sri Lanka. Yeah, yeah. if I were someone, no, I will say, let's have tourism next to Amman Tota. <laughs> Droves of Indians going to Amman Tota and as a tourist destination, see it and come back. We've got that we, airport we, there, we, na? No. Yeah, so you revive that also and then you start operating and have Indians going there. That will freak out Chinese like anybody. I mean, you can think of anything. So many things can be done. Mataya, Rajapakta. And of course, uh, uh, yes, sir. and uh, you know, you can also help them in their. Uh, they also have a problem of uh, radical Islam it's there. You can help them out there. You know, intelligence sharing. So many things can be done. I mean, uh, the sky is the limit. I mean, I'd but we need to we need to have the we need to be uh, what shall I say uh, proactive about it. That's the word proactive. Right? Uh, we shouldn't let this opportunity go. It will not come easily again. That I agree with you, sir. As a matter of fact, uh, I would actually go on to a limb and I agree with you that don't treat them like a state, but give them all the facilities that you would give a state. Um, it doesn't hurt to send a team of doctors down to Sri Lanka. It doesn't hurt to send some vaccines, some medical supplies. You know, we've got oversupplies of food. We are food secure also, I'm sure, feeding yeah, yeah. a couple of million people. Instead of, we, India, instead of rat eating these of food in our FCI godals, you can send it there at least. Right? So there are a lot of things you can do. I, I, I'm sure we can help Give them. them scholarships for education, yeah, yeah, yeah. opportunities. Exchange programs. Exchange programs. Give them yeah. your old weapon systems, which you're probably, you know, in, at half life you can give it to them. Uh, no. Well, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Be so, done. so so many, so much. So much. And we do it for so Bhutan. Much. Why not Sri Lanka? I mean, uh, yeah. Uh, Bhutan is a special treaty we have with them, yes, uh, but we can have something similar. Similar with Sri Lanka. Similar, I won't say exactly similar, but 
somewhere there you know because sri lanka won't accept such a treaty yeah leaving the that only won't... alone we don't no no the china chinese will not allow yeah. such a treaty we have to forget that it's not a one way show chinese will uh, this thing will come will put in their effort effort see people to people connect has to be improved that's the that's the bottom line right yeah so it's a i think a very very interesting discussion and i think it's very important for us to understand the in the the criticality of the situation that we are dealing with especially in sri lanka india cannot survive uh, i mean the chinese have a dream of surviving by picking up a fight with all of its neighbors and we ridicule it for it uh, 14 border countries and 28 disputes um i don't think india would want to see itself in that sort of a situation we already have disputes with two large countries so there is another factor the moment sri lanka is safe and secure you know we are confident about sri lanka your entire indian indo pacific strategy will get a fillip yeah okay you you take it to a different level altogether I mean, one another one of the advantages, and I am sure there, yeah, are, there yeah. are multiple more advantages to yeah, the entire yeah. relationship. Um, the teas, the tea supplies, and you know, we've also got a huge tea cultivation, probably yes. cross linkages of technology and stuff like that. India is producing huge amount of organic uh, fertilizer today. Could be sent across, uh, you know. So, and the Sri Lankans have actually uh, maintained their words of keeping Chinese military equipment away from Sri Lanka. Uh, so far yes yes there were two yeah. submarines uh, that were brought there there were two submarines that were brought there and uh, the sri lankans protested so they were they had to be you know moved away so no, yeah i agree with you yeah. so thanks so much i think very you know educative discussion on a very very critical feature of uh, indian foreign policy today we are looking at uh, you know the discussions on tv are more about indian involvement in ukraine and so on and so forth but i think it be neighborhood as you brought out very clearly that neighborhood first act east these things need to become a reality they have to kind of uh, you know put forward targets and actually exceed them yep so i, I think uh, we will also come up with a detailed discussion on myanmar as you and i were discussing in in the, in the near future um, thank you so much for this one sir till next time for another subject jai hind Yeah. Uh, you saw that